When the United States entered World War I, they did not have any tanks of their own, as did most countries. At first, the Americans relied on the French Renault FT-17. They just got a bunch of those from France, and they just operated them as is. However, it was soon realized that tanks were going to play a critical role on the battlefield, and the French did not have the industry to manufacture all the FT-17s that the U.S. wanted. So the U.L. the U.S. built pretty much an exact copy of the tank and called it the M1917 tank. This ended up being plagued with delays due to the lack of cooperation in the United States and the different measurement systems used between the two nations. In the mid in mid 1918, the United States began designing their own tank called the Ford Three Ton M1918. It was a two-man tank, could go 8 miles an hour, and the main armament was a 30 caliber Browning machine gun. Before this, however, the U.S. was working on another tank design called the Holt Gas Electric Tank. This is considered to be the first tank to be 100% designed and made by the United States. It, however, ended up being a complete and utter failure, as it was way too heavy, it was 28 short tons, and it had a 4-cylinder, 90-horsepower engine, and this tank was way too complex to work on. Despite its failure, it did get the United States into the tank production business, and it, even though it was bad, it was still a stepping stone for the interwar period and ultimately World War II tank design. And last but not least, we have the Mark 8 International Tank. This tank was jointly designed by the United States and Britain, and was to be manufactured in France. When the U.S. entered World War I, the British already had the Mark VI tank. Well, the, the Americans, being who they are, thought they could make they could take the British tank, add their own little spin on it, and make it better. And as a result, we got the Mark VIII. The U.S. would be in charge of making the engine and the transmission for the vehicle. The British would contribute armor plates, structural supports, weapons, and ammunition. And the French would take it would take on putting it all together since they were closer to the front. However, due to delays, the tank was never ready by the time the war ended. The tanks mostly went to the U.S. during the interwar period and eventually were sold to the Canadians near the outbreak of World War II for tank training. Now we'll move on to the only major half-track that was being used during this time. In general, as heavier and heavier artillery guns were built, horses became less effective in moving them around. The United States decided to solve this problem by using the Holt Tractor. The Holt Tractor, as its name suggests, was made by the Holt Manufacturing Company. This vehicle was used extensively by the British, Americans, and the French during the war. And, like I said earlier, it's they only pretty much used it to haul around their big artillery guns. By the time that the war ended, about 10,000 Holt tractors were in service. In the military, there were two models. A 120 horsepower model that was steered using a single front wheel, and a 75 horsepower model that used the two tracks in the back for steering. Despite it being used quite a bit in the First World War, by the end of it, half-tracks were starting to be phased out as leaders didn't see the point of them because they had tanks with tracks and they also had four-wheel drive vehicles, so there's no need to put them together at all. So that about covers early American tanks between 1917 and 1919. Make sure to subscribe for the next video. Thanks for watching.